Well, uh, what we've seen in the last uh, 10 or 20 years is that manufacturing has become much more remote. Uh, manufacturers uh, and retailers are sourcing from production uh, lines and suppliers who are based uh, in developing regions of the world. Asia, for example. Now, uh, Asia, the resilience of the infrastructure there is not as great as it has been as it is in other parts of the world, which means it's very much uh, at risk, for, for example, to natural disasters and uh, uh, flooding uh, comes in, into mind. Uh, but also, we've seen uh, in some areas, for example, this is tsunami and earthquakes. Now, as uh, manufacturers uh, are sourcing from the suppliers in, in these particular uh, regions, they have to uh, undertake some sort of risk analysis. And that really hasn't been done over the last few years. Uh, it's only been in the last few years when we've had these big natural disasters that, that it has gone on to the uh, strategic, um, has been moved up in importance in, in terms of the, the strategic uh, implications for the overall uh, corporate and, and their business uh, uh, and their the business risks. So it's it's not uh, exactly that companies or supply chains should prepare for each of these natural disasters because you never know when the next one is is coming from. It's that they have to make their overall supply chain more resilient, and they can do that by planning for a disaster. It's what's called risk agnostic approach. Uh, which means that they have the plans in, in place to be able to respond. They have control tasks, they have teams monitoring what's happening around the world. They have visibility of their suppliers uh, in place so they know what's happening at tier two, tier three and tier four levels. Uh, and they, they can undertake in that case risk mitigation strategies which means that they can have a diverse number of suppliers uh, who are su supplying particular components to them. So there's a lot that they can do to make their overall supply chain more resilient, but what they can't do is really prepare against a, a single particular event. Demand shocks have been very important to, uh, to manufacturing, over, over, in particular in the last five years, from since 2008 onwards, when we entered the uh, what's called the, the Great Recession now. Uh, and a lot of companies were shown to be lacking in, in, in their preparedness for the, the implications for uh, the economic downturn. In a lot of cases, particularly in the high tech sector, for example, uh, many companies actually switched off the supply from, from various uh, suppliers in the Far East because the demand had dropped quite considerably. But then when demand back, bounced back, they weren't able to switch on the supply because these, uh, many of these companies had gone out of business, uh, which meant that they weren't able to supply their customers. And uh, we, we saw that particularly in the case of uh, Cisco, and that had a, a major impact on, on its business. Other demand shocks, for example, could be the, uh, the cost of oil, which um, has been very volatile over the last uh, few years. And that's something which companies now need to take into account when they're planning their supply chains. Uh, at the moment, it's uh, reasonably level at uh, $100 uh, or, so, or so. But what happens to company supply chains if it rockets up to $140, $150, as we saw back in 2007? So they need to plan their supply chains accordingly. Absolutely, and I think moving forward, uh, companies really have to be very much aware of the risks to their uh, own reputation, and this is something that they are now taking, uh, becoming, uh, taking more into account. Uh, they have to realise that if they uh, source goods from emerging world, then they still have a responsibility for the uh, employees that their suppliers. Uh, use and they also have a responsibility for the uh, environmental practices of their suppliers. 
Uh, now, if they don't, if they don't have the visibility, or they don't care about these those particular practices, then from from a consumer point of view, uh, they have a real impact in the sales of their goods. So there's a there's a moral, uh, ethical perspective to supply chains, which really need to be taken into account. Again, it's very difficult to prepare for a single event, which means that you'll have to make your supply chain resilient overall, far more robust than many supply chains are now. You never know if the, uh, if the aircraft which your uh, consignment of goods on um, may, may be bombed. Uh, there may be many things which, which happen to your supply chain which are going to disrupt the supply of, of goods. So you need to have contingency plans in place. You need to have the information technology uh, the sense and respond capabilities to be to know where your goods are at any one time and if they are disrupted to choose different ways of, uh, of either sourcing the goods or routing those those goods so it's oh you have to have overall preparedness for, for these type of events